Buonasera e benvenuti. So good evening and welcome to this international conference whose title is Consecratio et Consecratio per Evangelica Consiglia and um, its subtitle to uh, its Reflections, Open Issues and Possible Pathways. This conference was organized by the Congregation for Institutes of Consecrated Life and Societies of Apostolic Life and uh, it's a step along a pathway of reflection which started a long time ago uh, and is related to the activity of our dicastery that peaked in a seminar of studies two months ago which from a multidisciplinary standpoint considered the topic of consecration and consecration through evangelical councils. So these, those were intense study and reflection days which saw the participation of experts expanding on this topic and attempting to give um, an answer in terms of biblical approach, historical approach, theological approach, um, considering different facets, and particularly with a focus on legal aspects. The proceedings of that workshop, which are about to be published, will show you the richness and multidisciplinarity of this theme, um, which was expanded on in uh, scholarly presentation and uh, in uh, um, and in the speeches by the counter rapporteurs who also spoke on the same subjects. We will follow our agenda and the theme of consecration and consecration by um, evangelical councils will be addressed through different approaches, theological, ecclesiological and charismatic, um, um, through a, judi through a ju juridical approach. But I'm now giving the floor to Cardinal Joao Bras, Cardinal Davis. I will introduce him to those who are not yet perhaps familiar with his uh, life and feats. Um, his eminence was born in 1947. Joao Bras Davis is a Brazilian cardinal. He was ordained priest in 1972, and he became a bishop in 1994 with, um, in, in the seat of Fenucleta. He was then transferred to other, other dioceses, Ponta Grossa in 1998, Maringa in 2002, Bra Brasilia in 2004, um, an archdiocese whom he led until 2011. And since 4th January 2011, he is prefect of the Dicastery for Consecrated Life. He was um, appointed bishop, cardinal, so, sorry, in 2012 by Paul Perry the 16th is a member of the order of the cardinal deacons and his eminence is a member of the congregation for the bishops, for the clergy, for Catholic education and of the pontifical committee for Eucharistic um, congresses, international Eucharistic congresses. So his um, welcoming words will inaugurate our um, conference. Can you hear the translations? Can you hear translation? So, sometimes um, we have some technical difficulty with, uh, with translations because of the headsets and all, but everything is working well. So, we are have got used to welcoming you in Rome with joy on events such as this, which um, today 
um, we participate in to deepen the meaning of our life as consecrated people within the church and close to Pope Francis, who is Peter for us at this time in the life of the church. In fact, um, the already since the year of consecrated life, um, 2015, our events devoted to formation and dialogue are intensified both here in Rome and in the various continents, led by the Gospel of Jesus and by the Magisterium of the Church. We have so far deepened several dimensions in our vocation um, through the various charisms that God gave to the church through our founders. That is why we welcome you once again with great joy. So, um, consecrated life and uh, its members are a cause of great joy for us. We are getting better. Thank, thank you for your commitment and for being here to be with us and look for the light that the Lord gives us concerning understanding consecration uh, and its meaning in this present moment in the life of the church and um, with a special focus on uh, our consecration through evangelical councils of chastity, poverty and obedience. We are here, members of Institutes of Consecrated Life, of Societies of Apostolic Life, of Secular Institutes, of Ordo Virginum, of the new institutes on new forms, of ecclesial associations and movements, and perhaps there are also some hermits with us. We represent um, many um, a large portion of the church, and we try to make sure that Jesus' new wine renews the wineskins of consecrated life so that we can experiment the joy of the gospel and help the Lord to give it to many others who come to us. Trying to prepare in the best way to this meeting with you, in the first days of the month of March, we from the Dicastery for Consecrated Life, some 40 people, met uh, with some professors from our universities, um, some from Rome, some from other universities, we, um, superior generals and members uh, of institutes and societies to get to know better each other and to exchange our views on the diversified phenomenon of consecration in the, in the church today. If, on the one hand, the Church tells us that all forms of true consecration are a gift of the Holy Spirit for the life of the whole body of the Church, on the other hand, we need authentic criteria to discern what is happening. In fact, we speak about consecrated people who take on as a form of consecrated life evangelical councils of poverty, chastity, and obedience. This happens for the members of the institutes and of the societies of apostolic life, of Ordo Virginum, secular institutes, and in the case of hermits. But today, we speak about consecration also for people who are married within new forms or, or new ecclesial movements as it is the case with the so-called ecclesial families. How can we understand and how should we live within this diversity, the elements that are typical of consecration according to the orientation of the church? This is the question that lies before us. Tomorrow, Pope Francis will help us with the grace of Peter. This meeting, this encounter for us will be very important tomorrow morning, but it is also our task to try and find with him the light of the Holy Spirit. So our context 
finds its meaning, sorry, our, com our conference finds its meaning within this context. Since the Second Vatican Council, we've understood the consecrated life is an essential part of the Church. Today, we can uh, understand nothing else. So, charisms are coessential uh, to the Church and its hierarchy. And the Church, we need to understand, is the people of God walking along history. In it, God wants to sanctify and save men and women, not without bond or link between one another, but rather it wants to bring men together as one people, a people which acknowledges him in truth and serves him in holiness. This is from Lumen Gentium. The Second Vatican, Vatican Council devoted the sixth chapter of the Dogmatic Constitution on the Church Lumen Gentium, number 43 and 47, to the religious. The religious are seen uh, by the Council Fathers as an integral part of the people of God, so they're not separated, they are within the people. Even though um, even though they refer to um, consecration through evangelical councils, um, but the fathers say that we baptism, strengthened by so many and such great mean of salvation, all faithful, whatever their state of condition, are called by the Lord and they are consecrated to the service of God. And this is a special, a special type of consecration, consecrated life is, which is deeply rooted in the baptismal consecration, expressing them with greater fullness. So baptismal consecration, has a very special place in the consecration pathway. So we must be aware of this. In this connection, Pope Francis, in his apostolic exhortation on the calling to sanctity in the contemporary world on 19th March, specifically referred to the call to sanctity which the Lord is addressing to all of us and to you too. You are holy because I am uh, holy. The Second Vatican Council, continues Pope Francis, has highlighted this strongly, strengthened by so many and such great means of salvation. Um, all faithful, whatever their condition or state, are called by the Lord, each in his or her own way, to that perfect holiness by which the Father himself is perfect. This is number 14 of this um, um, apostolic exhortation, Gaudete et Exultate. Here, sanctity is seen as a pathway for everyone, not just for us within the church. And um, consecrated life from now on will be increasingly a sign of this uh, holiness among the people. And uh, right afterwards, the Pope invites everyone to allow grace of baptism to bear fruit in a pathway of holiness. In, under the current circumstances, becoming more clearly aware of baptismal consecration that made us the children of God and made us brothers and sisters in the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord, will also allow us to better understand the meaning of consecration in different ways uh, that are complementary within the, among the people of God. 
starting precisely from this baptismal grace. Last but not least, I would like to remind you that in the Perfecta Caritatis decree on the rene renewal of religious life, the Council lists the elements that are common to all forms of religious life. I will not quote them because they will come up in the next few days. So we are here together as a church, as the people of God, consecrated in various forms. Uh, we trust the presence of the Holy Spirit, and we are before him. Uh, in order to reflect, so first of all, we want to reflect, we want to think, as Father Pachola was saying, to um, address open issues. and. These include also the understanding our consecration and to find guidance to undertake possible pathways. So I wish you uh, all the best, um, a fruitful conference and the grace of God upon all of us. Ringraziamo il Cardinale Prefetto. I wish to thank the Cardinal Prefect for his um, um, introductory words, and he gave us an outline uh, about what we are going to do in these days. So we do not start from scratch, but we have the teachings of the Council uh, as a reference point, and uh, numbers um, 43 and 46 of Lumen Gentium, Perfecte Caritatis, some aspects that will be underscored once again during the various presentations, particularly tomorrow, so number 43 and 47, um, which also was all, which have also been confirmed by all the popes in the past uh, 50 years and also by the teachings of the dicastery um, that have been set out in various documents. Um, in, in, in based on this distinction between baptismal consecration and specific consecration achieved through evangelical councils.